the noise in here in the background is my little diesel heater just warming up. Unfortunately, it's no your video or newer video because it's freezing in here. The little adapter I made that's screw onto there wasn't going to work. I've changed my mind. I'm going to do it differently. There's a little woodruff key slot in there, which I've got a key for. It's a 3 mil woodruff key. So I've made this little adapter, which pushes onto there. It's a really good fit. And inside of there, I'm going to put a barrel nut to hold that on. It's going to be held level with the end of the threads, which means I can use the woodruff key to drive it and it'll be tightened on nice and tight. I've also bought a, a, a cush drive coupling. It's what you use on stepper motors on big CNC machines. It should do the job quite nicely. Uh, it comes with a 19mm bore. I've bought it out bigger to fit on there. So that's going to go onto there. Probably held on with two grub screws, I'm not quite sure. Level the end of there because there'll be a barrel nut in there to hold it on. And that part there goes into there and it'll allow for any slight little bit of misalignment. So that's this side. I know what I'm going to do with this side, I've still got that side to sort out. Uh, so the thing to do next is to cut the woodruff key slot, or cut the key slot in there. Now I have managed to borrow a 3mm dovetail cutter. It's had a bit of miserable life, but it is nevertheless a 3mm cutter. And I'm going to use that to cut the keyway in there. But I haven't got an adapter, so we'll have to make a little adapter for it. And then we'll go about cutting. Cutting the keyway. I've got lots of brooches, but I haven't got a brooch 3mm. So that's why I had to borrow one. That's the sort of thing we need to make an adapter. And that's a bigger brooch, obviously. Uh, that fits into the, into the hole of one brooching. That goes in there, and these teeth get gradually bigger and bigger, and they're pressed through there, and that cuts the, the, the keyway. Once you cut a little bit, you put a, a shim in behind there, take another cut, and you carry on until you get the, the keyway cut to full depth. It's slow, old, but it always works. I found that in my scrap bin, I've got no idea what it is or what it was, but it's halfway to being a brooch already, or a brooch guide already. I'm just going to turn this down or down, give you a nice fit in there, which you know is 15 mil. It's saying 15.9, so we'll take just under half a mil off. I love this three old truck, once it's set up it runs really true. Right on the tight side, pan his hair more. Right, that's it. That's a blonde pan his hair, that's a really thin one. A ginger one of the thick, thick ginger bastards. Perfect up. I don't actually need that much so we can take a bit off the end of it. Just needs with the length of the bush, no more, no less. Although it won't harm to leave it, leave it that length in case I get a, a thicker bit of material to do. Just part the other end off. And then that's the bush done just to the machine a slot into it. Drop down the gear. Don't know what this is made out of, I what it was for, just to appear to be a bit of soft steel this machine in quite nicely. Little bits like that are always invaluable. Depending on what you're going to use them for, it's obviously not going to be a part for a spaceship, so it will make a broken bush. Very nicely indeed. And a little bit goes back in the scrub bin.
actually not that sharp edge off. Just putting one's fingers on it. Next we need to machine a slot down there for that to go into. And that is it's actually eighth of an inch, that's one eighth of an inch thick with a three mil cutting edge and I have got one left eighth inch high speed steel milling cutter these haven't got a great life expectancy especially when it's the last one if you've got a spare one and it's a Sunday morning you can normally get away with it if you haven't we'll, we'll, we'll try so what we're going to do put a couple of packing pieces in here we'll parallel just to get the I'm quite happy that this vase is set up to be true it simply goes on there like that and we'll find the centre of it in the middle of the, middle of the slot in I'm going to use this wiggler just to find the centre of the, the shaft we'll just over between those two there Oh, don't bring it across until it stops moving and it will push off as you keep advancing it that's it there so we'll zero that axis on the DRO see what they are saying stop moving right then we'll half that, turn this until the machine says zero, that's that there. We'll lock the axis off, and that there was running nice and two in the centre. Right, the middle cut I've set up, you can see it's bang in the centre. I've got the machine running as fast as it'll go, which I think is about three and a half thousand. I've got safety goggles on because this little cutter has only got one ambition in life and that really is to snap off taking tiny little cuts I put some water on it as well give it a fighting chance give every Every chance possible to survive. I'm taking four of a mill foot, that's all, no more. I mean, it's not a big machine, but it's big enough where you haven't got much fuel when you're using something as small as this. I've managed to get a machine without breaking the milling cutter, but it did take a long time. So the brooch goes into there, nice fit in the slot. And you can see all the teeth are they're hidden there as it, as it brooch advances to tape that and it starts to take a cut. So now we'll go across to the other press and see if we can cut the key way. The brooch has a similar life expectancy as in the eighth end mill, not a great lot. And so that guide slips into there and the brooch goes into there as you push it through it cuts and then we'll put little shims in behind there just to pack it out easy as that right, we need plenty of oil on here especially with the, the brooch not being the best in the world this is the first cut going in 
little space that they go in there just to push it through the last little bit but that felt quite nice hopefully it's going to play and not be a bastard I can't believe how long I've been on putting this miserable keyway in here but it'll all be worth it in the end right so that's the first pass through there See, it's actually got some cut and it has taken a very light cut. Next, we need to start making some little sti thin shims to go behind there. Quite a time consuming job it is. I put a little shim in behind it so we can take another bite of the cherry, so to say. The cut I raised blunt, it's struggling to, to do this, especially cut and stain this. I'm putting a lot of weight on here. Oh! See the. The ideal thing for it is to snap the leg snapping really hard your and especially when it's not mine. Right after all that, after all that we've managed to get a kiwi cut in there. Quite nice it is as well, I'm pleased with it. And it does in fact want to go together. There's a nice tight fit on there. Which is basically just what that is. And the nut on there will pull it in nicely. So after Probably two hours of making the adapter. We've actually got the thing together. So I've got a little barrel nut to make to go inside there. Then that is locked onto there. Level with the end of that. And that part goes into there. And that's your, your like, sort of flexible drive. And I'm going to make that fit onto there somehow. I'm not quite sure what we're going to be doing with this. There's another horrible kiwi in there, but I don't think we'll be. I don't know, I'm not quite sure yet. I've worked it out. Unfortunately, I've lost some machining video. I had a memory card crash or die on us. Um, so, all I can do now is show you what I have machined and basically put this all, drive all back together. This was going to be the problem part, and I actually machined a steel sleeve, as you can see. It's a shrink fit on that shaft, really tight, and then I put a roll pin through for good measure, and it runs nice and true, so that's going to be fine for that part. I've also machined the coupling, ready to fit that, and I put a clamp and screw in each side, and there's a flat on each side of the shaft, I'm fairly certain that that will be good enough to hold that. On the dynamo side, you saw us make that bush, I made a barrel nut, Tightened that in so that's now tightened in there with a key in so it really can't go anywhere. Once again, two flats machined on there. This bearing is actually supplied with oil. I'm not sure what's meant to go on with that one, so I've put some real high quality bearing grease into it. So this can go into here first. And the coupling. Can go onto there. Make sure we get the right coupling because the shafts are a different size. It's not like making them make two things the same size, really, is it? Right, so that goes onto there. We'll leave the grub screws loose for the minute. Right, it all goes together. I need to put the alternator one further on. I've actually nipped the bolts up to hold it. That wants to go further onto the shaft, which is a good thing. Right, because that one there will slide. I put a bolt in just to hold it for the minute. Gabby bastard thing. I've spent a lot of time on this job. A lot of time. Um, I just hope it all works out for him in the end. It's an unknown quantity as to whether I will turn fast enough to charge if it'll stand the heat. We'll find out. Won't we? Poxy thing. Right, 
Right. That's it. Then we'll put we'll it on now. And the drive is running nice and smooth. There's no stiffness. I'm really pleased with the, the lineup of it all. So we need to bring this one a little bit further into mesh. Like that. Basically got full. Oh, I like it. I really like it. I'm just going to take that little screw out of there and just make sure that we've still got plenty of shaft. We have. Right, so I'm going to show it to drip some bearing fit in there, and I'll do anything I will because if we need to get it apart and I've pulled bearing fit in, we'll have a hell of a job with it. I've put these in instead of grub screws just so you can get a lot more. You're getting a lot tighter with a, a decent head on them. That feels lovely and smooth, really nice. That couldn't be more smooth if I tried, I'm really happy with that. Which are kind of all bolted together. These bolts aren't tight yet, but it's I don't need the wiggle room I put into it, it's just lined itself up absolutely spot on. I'll lift these up and then fully tighten the couplings up. These wood bolts on here as well, trying to keep it sort of the way it would have been. Right now for a final tightening of these. These are going to get a really good grip, especially with there being flats on the shaft, it's not going to go anywhere. Well, the ball at LLK will come in very handy. Tool of use here, but never mind. Good. Okay, so that's the, the finished art together. I'm really, really happy with that. And it looks like a day we're not on there, that's what. Yeah, very happy. Once again, it's just time to say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. As usual, if you haven't subscribed, please do because we're getting perilously near to 100,000 views. Anyway, thanks for watching.